All right, everybody. Hi, and welcome to the official Body Spartan Podcast. My name is Gabe Tuft. I am the founder of Body Spartan, and tonight I am joined by the one, the only, the lovely, the luscious, the fantastic... Hello, First Lady of Body Spartan, Priscilla Tuft. (laughs) Good evening. So anticlimactic of that huge introduction. Hello, First Lady of Body Spartan, Priscilla Tuft. Did you want me to say, I Lord Almighty, it's been a hot minute. Rip your shirt like, off. Seriously. Shake your stuff around minute. and go, I'm here, bitches. <laughs> a lot of people have been contacting us this week and saying, where the heck have you guys been? And let me tell you, we're not being lazy. It has been an intense couple of weeks. It has. And we're excited to bring you some content. We're going to give you a little bit of backstory because we have been through Hades and back, like literally. Yeah, but literally. You know, before we get to that stuff. No, before we get to that stuff, we had to talk. I know Priscilla's like, I just want to get into it. That's what she says. She's always like, I just want to get into it. But we can't fucking just get into it because there's stuff to fucking talk about. What did I do today? Let's talk about what I did today because this is about me sometimes. Most of the time. You know what there's he did today? He something actually, first board. off, really what the hell is that? First off, he worked a lot today. But what did I work on? What did I work on? Well, legs, obviously, because you're in your compression pants and you no. smell like butt. What? It's because I didn't shower. This is how dedicated I am, guys. I actually, I actually, uh, I, you know, we're dealing with all this this fire shit. So we we took the family today out to Lake Sonoma, which is like an hour plus drive out there. We hung out all day. Not all day. This we actually left at three. Oh, that's what you're gonna share? No, I'm gonna share. I more. was gonna I was gonna share the fact that you got a Gabriel Tuft pin in the mail today, I have a rock and you didn't even order it. And I think that's really awesome. It, your very own Gabriel Tuft pen. That's pretty pretty cool. I'm going to cross out Gabriel and put so Priscilla. So this was actually a pink, That's awesome. It was a pink rhinestone inside my compression <laughs> pants. How the fuck did that get there? So we went out to Lake Sonoma, but before that, I worked my ass off today. I was determined to get this next program off the ground. We've been not fighting about it, but we've been trying to figure out what the next program is going to be. Is it going to be functional training? Is it going to be an in-home workout? Is it going to be targeted keto? We want to do all the cycling? things for you people. And everybody has started something. Well, Priscilla actually finished what she started, but you know, both <laughs> Howard and Brandon have actually started writing programs. They're amazing programs. And they're great. They're, they're, I think Brandon's over halfway done. Howard's 90% done with writing it, but I just can't and wait. cats get stuck in trees so often that they Brandon hasn't been do. able to be here long enough they to film do. it. Those you boys know, work so hard. It they, is unbelievable. They really do, but I just get fucking tired of waiting. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to write a program almost you know just yeah i just got a bad mouth i'm gonna write you, a program. you really write don't today. until you're on doing podcast. a podcast well, like, or if i'm in wow. the gym it, that, those are two places i have a bad mouth in the, on a podcast or in the gym when shit's serious but i have been really trying to pay attention to what people are asking for looking up the trends and i'm trying to figure out what works the best and experimenting on myself for what works the best so here's what i'm doing i'm writing for now, this is the temporary placeholder. We're calling it Genesis 2.0 because Genesis has been so successful. And everybody asks, Gabe, what's next? Body Spartan, what's next? What's next? All the guys. You know, we've got revolution for the girls. But Greedy the guys, little stinkers. The Always guys are more. like, what is next? And I mean, we've got people that have done Genesis. They've done Unleashed. Or they've gone the other way around. Here's what I'm finding is working best for me, especially if you're at the point where you've done Genesis already. Even if you haven't done Genesis Keto is huge right now, and I don't want to say that we started keto, but I think we fucking started keto, too. Genesis came out, what, two and a half years ago is when we launched Genesis? Well, we but wrote it were, four years ago. But yeah, but you were running keto diets back when you were competing for all of your your WNSO Pro stuff. But I didn't know anybody else who competed that way except for my girls that I trained and right. my guys that I put on stage. I mean, it was, I'm not saying you developed a keto diet, but you developed a your proprietary formula for it my I mean, formula yeah. your thing the that one that i know use. works yeah <laughs> every time uh, by the way if you guys work. don't know what i didn't include in priscilla's accolades in the beginning that she is a master sports nutritionist with uh national academy of sports nutrition so she knows her shit and so basically i like to play when, with macros well, keto has gotten really <laughs> popular and trendy there's a whole other part of keto that nobody's even talking about and that's targeted keto and this is a really this is when the science when you get down to the science of keto it it is so, it's, we're trying to make it easy. How can I say this? Um, there's so many little nuances. 
And if you try to do targeted keto on your own, you're probably going to do it wrong and you're going to fuck the whole thing up. That's why I'm going to lay it all out for you guys. Not on this podcast, but in my Genesis 2.0. Definitely a science. And what I'm doing is I'm incorporating some functional training in this thing. So everybody loves the high volume training that I do and that we do, that Body Spartan does, that we've all just adopted because it fucking works. And so with Genesis 2.0, I'm literally taking high volume workouts. I'm I'm slamming them in there with functional training, active rest, targeted keto, and I'm going to do these uh, these optional AM cardio. Because you guys know I'm a huge fan of fasted AM cardio. And so is Priscilla getting your, your cardio done before you go start your day, before you have anything in your stomach. You sleep all night. You don't eat. You can have a glass of water, a cup of coffee with nothing in it. Have your coffee black. Make sure you got no sugar, no carbs. Go do your cardio. That's when your body burns the most body fat. Yet I do take my BCAAs. I, I'm pretty, I stand by that pretty close. That's okay. But everybody's a little bit different. Well, that, that's okay because BCAAs don't have any sugars in them. They have no carbs. They're literally branched chain amino acids. So that's going to actually prevent your body from going catabolic. So you're saving muscle. You're staying in an anabolic state. Are you looking at something down here? I realize I'm wearing compression pants and I saw your no, eyes. No, you're good. I saw your eyes wander. You're it's, good. It's actually on film. You're I'm good. definitely going to zoom in on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is throw in what Priscilla is actually doing it with Revolution and the girls. She's provided a bunch of hit routines that they can do in the mornings or whenever they want. I think you're, you're doing AM faster cardio too, right? We do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think you give them an option to do something else if they want to. But it's, it's funny because it's like, okay, fasted cardio, keto. There is so much more to our methods and, and our science behind what we're doing. Oh, it's a it's so much more. Oh, yeah, because it's like, yeah. okay, you're on a keto diet. Congratulations. But ours is a cyclinic ketogenic diet with both Genesis and Revolution. So that's not what you're going to get in mainstream media. You can Google all day long. You're never going to get the formulas that we are using. And they are highly impactive yeah they throw out very general percentages for your macros and that's not but they work. don't teach cyclinic ketogenic diet like no. you're not cycling in and out and taking advantage of the depletion of glycogen and the replacement of glycogen in a regular ketogenic diet so we're t taking that to an even higher level yeah this is the most with genesis intense, two this is the most intense keto diet possible and when i say intense we mean really the most effective and the most advanced because people don't do it because it's so complicated when you try to figure out the numbers on your own, but we've made it so simple with Genesis and Revolution. And people are like, how is it that I am getting shredded? My girls are getting shredded yeah, on Revolution. It's ridiculous. They're like, how is it that I'm getting such good results on this? Yeah. Don't worry about it. Just, just look in the mirror and smile. Just, just look, <laughs> look at your macros that we tell you every single day keep and on doing exactly doing. what you tell you. And the other cool thing about uh, Genesis 2.0 is it's going to be the first program that we're actually integrating with uh, wearable technology. We're, we're incorporating, not incorporating, we're partnering with a company. Hopefully everything goes good. I'm just going to blast this out there right now. We've been talking to a company called Push. It's the Push Band wearable and they're phenomenal. And they make remote control jock straps. <laughs> so, oh wait, are you talking about the other thing? Uh, the oh, I'm sorry. butt plug? Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, which, wait, what were I'm, we talking about? I'm confused. Oh, okay. Oh. this is the push oh, band, oh, not, oh. not the push plug. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, totally. I'm sorry. I guess so many. Ah, uh, yes. By the way, this is not a G-rated show. Uh, so push, push band wearables, they have been working with elite organizations like the NFL and a bunch of other big ones. They are looking to get into the gym space, and we have had some talks with them. We've tested the push band. I tested another sensor before. It was called the Beast sensor, and I really didn't like it. It didn't. It kept missing reps and stuff, and it just wasn't what I was hoping for. Not that it's a bad company by any means, because it has its its good parts. But this push band, dude, it hasn't missed a single rep yet. They have algorithms for every exercise that we're doing so it knows what's going on so we're partnering with them we're going to be incorporating uh genesis 2.0 first but then also we're going to back incorporate revolution unleashed and the original genesis program so that we're i mean i'm trying to take all the thinking out of this for you guys where literally you put on this band you click a button it's like boom here's your next one boom here's the next one you got your phone there it shows you what you do and it just it counts your reps for you you track your weight you're done like, and you don't the have to look is, at the program you just look at your app now the original genesis is enough the original revolution is enough, but we want to give you the next thing. And this is going to be powerful, you guys. Yeah, we're always awesome. looking to stay one step ahead so that we can help you guys and that you don't get lost in the mix. And we're trying to make it as simple as possible. So in the interim, while you're waiting for the targeted keto diet, if you're a guy, go to bodyspartan.com, click on men's shredding program. That is our Genesis program. If you're a lady, click on the female, the women's shredding program. That is revolution. That is Priscilla's 
keto diet, it's a clinic keto diet workout program that's so much more with neurohacking. Uh, you know, it addresses all the issues that females go through, the emotional issues. I mean, it, it's amazing. The feedback has been unbelievable. We also got a private Facebook group for the customers. We do. It's crazy. So okay, so we're letting that. that out. Okay, that's something that we only tell people that have already purchased the program. I know. We but actually, but I'm just saying, like, this is something that I've held very quiet and very dear to my heart. But when the ladies sign up, they are allowed to be in this private Facebook group where we pour into each other with love and motivation and accountability and they've they've gotten these success partner things going and lots of different recipes flying around it's not about giving you guys a program and taking off this is about building a community because you are the future of body spartan and you are leaders so we want to build you up in that way you guys are crushing it so proud you know i think i should start a guys group you know what? i'm gonna start a guys group that's enough that's it. I'm starting one. So can we get to the meat and potatoes? There's yeah. so much so to talk about. Today, guys, we're going to talk about how to command fear to stand down. And basically, this is going Wait, to be... Wait, say it like... It's supposed to be like military. Like, stand down, son. How to command fear to Soldier stand fear. down. Stand down. And what, what we mean by that is that when you are surrounded by... Well, let's just get into it. Let's let's tell the backstory. What, what happened this week, P? All right, you guys. It has been incredibly different like i don't know gabe and i are high vibe folks and just good things happen to us all the time but we had a really really gnarly uh seven days well it started with my back just being out of control in pain so much so that i ended up sleeping downstairs because I, th- I think it's our tempur bed i think it's just it's done and all my years of wrestling have caught up to me and I'm struggling. You're struggling too. Your neck was hurting and everything recently, but I ended up sleeping now. So I pulled, I literally pulled the cushion off our chase lounge, threw it on the ground, threw a bunch of pillows around. I'm like, I can't sleep on the floor because I'm so heavy. I wake up with like bruised ribs. So I'm going to sleep on this flat thing, which is the next best thing. And what did I do before I went to bed? I slept on the floor. I happened to take one of my edible chocolates that was 30 milligrams of, uh, the 15 and 15 THC and CBD and cut them into fourths pop one. I had the best sleep of like the last three months, <laughs> but I awoke Whatever at works. four thirty something to my phone ringing and I'm still in like dreamland going. This is the best sleep of my life. Actually, do, I do you mind if I back up a little bit? Is it? Oh, all right, you guys. So seven days before that. Yes, we've been having neck pain, back pain, whatever. Oh. That's life. You were old crotchety people. Well, yeah. less the old part, but crotchety. Yes, absolutely. When we sleep on a tempur that's been destroyed. So anyways, whatever. We had, um, we lost a family member and she was a furry family member and she's been with us for 15 and a half years. And it's our, our dog, Pero which you've seen her on Facebook. She is darling. She is like the most loving, most amazing. So we, we lost our family member. We don't even know our marriage without this dog. Like she came to us and, and won our hearts over and she's no dog lets you hold her like an infant. years old, still playful, still running around blind and deaf. You know, for the most part. Yeah. But super playful. And we don't want to beat the drum of what went wrong, but we will say that it was really hard hitting. So we're just like, screw this. We're going to take our other. We should say what happened. She had a stroke or seizure in the middle of the night. It was crazy. Like we went to bed. Everything was super cool. I was downstairs on the couch watching. uh, I think I was watching Iron Man three or something. Heard her down there and uh, I went upstairs to bed. She came upstairs to bed with us. And we woke up, it was like five o'clock, five, five thirty. She started making some strange noises and she'd had a stroke or a seizure. And like, apparently when we took her to the vet, neurologically, she wasn't there. And, and for those of you guys that aren't dog owners, you haven't had a dog since they were a puppy. You probably won't understand this, but it was really tough. And um, we took her to the vet. There was nothing they could do. There's there just was nothing that to be done. And they said we could take her home, and in a couple of days it would probably be over. Um, but she passed peacefully right there in the vet's office with us, and it was brutal, like brutal. Like Actually, to, for you, it such was, a different perspective. For you, you had a different perspective. Mm-hmm. It was a very. Like, I thought it was so peaceful and beautiful. For me, I struggle with death. I, it's the thing I fear most because I don't know what's on the other side. I have no idea. Well, then let's hit on that as we go through this, because I feel like this is as we give to the world, we're working on ourselves, too. I I think people should know that I was raised 
to believe in God. And I was, you know, Priscilla is a pastor's kid, but the older I get, the more I'm just like, I don't understand. You know, I have so many questions and it's like, I believe in a higher power. I definitely, there's too many, co- not coincidences, coincidences and just clues. Like take the Fibonacci sequence that appears everywhere from the ratio, the distance between our, our fingers and our knuckles and our, our ears all the way to celestial bodies. I'm talking like massive galaxies and solar systems. It can be seen there. So it's like there's, there's a thumbprint of a higher power somewhere, but. I don't know what's on the other side. And, and for it me, scares the shit out of me. For me, nobody has ever done that. Come back and be like, hey, this is what's on the other side, guys. <laughs> for me, I feel that energy and that presence every single day of my life. And I see evidence of that energy and that presence. I used to call it God. I used to say God because that's the word that I had for. It. And then I realized it's not the God that I thought I knew. It is a God that is truly living and truly active. And it's like a creator. And it's like, it's not a he, it's not a she, it's, it's this power. And it is so real. And I have full confidence of what's going to happen with me when I pass away. And so that's a difficult thing for us to kind of sift through, you know, as we're watching our dog slip away and I'm hearing not a physical words or not, not audible words, but I'm hearing words in my heart. I'm comfortable. If you release me to fall asleep, I'll fall asleep. So I followed that and I said, I said, Gabriel, you love this dog. Can you allow her to go to sleep? And 20 seconds after he allowed her to go to sleep, she went to sleep. It was. But not before she she had no signs of being here with us brain wise. She was just opening her eyes and looking at us so lovingly. Well, not even she wasn't even looking at us. There was nothing there. Yeah, there really wasn't anything she, there. No, no movement in the eyeballs. No, no response. No, I mean, she was gone. But right, he he released her to go in a really amazing, powerful way. But basically, like, I love you. You can fall asleep. And I knew it was it was time. She was ready to go to sleep, but not before she let out this beautiful, powerful, Arr! and it was just as if she was saying, "This was a good life." I want to howl like that in my last moments. I hope we all howl like that. It's this burst of energy that came through her, like as if she was a baby, as if she was a puppy. She used to, when she was little, she'd run around and catch a ball and she would, and then she just went to sleep. And it was within 20 seconds of him saying, yeah, you can go to sleep. And I don't believe that that's coincidence. It's not coincidence. It's coincidence, like Gabe said. So that was hard hitting. We we ended up yeah. leaving for Southern California. We're like, we're out of here. So we drove. Well, we first we went over to my parents' house and we buried her. Right. It was a family thing. Like Mia helped and wanted to help. It was a first experience with that, and you know, it was my first experience. She was so brave any, and powerful. Any, any one animal, and I wasn't there when my brother died. Um, I didn't. I couldn't really grasp what was happening. And for those of you that don't know, my brother committed suicide several years ago, and that's why Body Spartan exists. Uh, but he he shot himself in a shooting range, and so there it was just such a shock. And um, he wanted to be cremated, so I got to see him at the viewing, and it was short, very very short, and that was it. Like before I could even grasp what happened, it was over. Um, but with with my dog. And I watched her take her last breath. And that that small, tiny howl she let out, like I knew that was her last breath. And it was painful for me because I'm I don't know what was happening with her. Like I I don't I don't know. I guess I just fear that. Anyway, and so- I was very like I I had the real crazy spiritual connection with that dog where I knew what she was saying and what she was yeah. doing and what she needed. So like Priscilla said, we decided to just up and get out. We were needing to get out anyway and like get a change of scenery because I've been in this office for freaking months trying to do some stuff. And we have another Chihuahua that was raised by her. Yeah. So we wanted to kind of bond with so her. We as literally a- just said we hopped in the Rover same day, booked a hotel in uh, San Clemente where we used to live, where Priscilla's parents live and her sister and her sister's family. And we, we literally just drove. And Dominic, hours down there. my Dominic, little nephew, her, who's yep. crushing it at Revolution, by the way. So we drove down there, uh, hung out. I worked a little bit and then we played a little bit and then we came back and everything was good well until we got in the car and started driving and the sun came up and we realized that there was a mass shooting in vegas and it just brought everything full circle i say oh that's the second time i said oh that yeah i'm like yeah a lot of stuff actually and it well because we're 
resilient. We are really, really resilient and we choose joy. We're going to get into that, you guys. This We have some techniques that we're going to share with you that it, these things are going to help you when you go through devastation in your life. This is a really important podcast for you to be, be listening to. Well, the crazy part about Vegas, too, is that I was scheduling us a Vegas trip and it was going to be Actually this month. just scheduled. Well, when I was scheduling it, I was trying to get it earlier. And it was going to be this month, but we ended up scheduling it for November 10th, which is the following month because the Natural Olympia is out there. And David Larson is actually competing in that. And so is Ted Keys, another local. So I ended up so we not booked, scheduling. Yeah, I could we have been, booked we the could have been there. We like literally could have been there. So we booked the flights and then boom, like this happens. And we have tons of friends that live in Vegas and tons of connections in Vegas. We, we go over there all the time, you guys. And so this was like kind of a heavy hit. That's like our playground. We go there to play and get yeah. away. Um, so that was heavy. And then we get home and Gabe gets a call at what? Three, four in the morning? Four, thirty-two or something like that. And I call, my phone rings and it's Howard. I love our and boys. I, they and take you know, how he, how he gets up early because he, he's uh, decided to pursue his career at Pepsi. He's still, still working with Body Spartan, but he's like, he's got this thing he wants to do. So we're let him, you know, obviously never want to hold anybody back. So he's with Pepsi. So he's up early. He's up at like three or three thirty. And then he starts his run at four. Uh, so four thirty calls me I'm like what in the world? And I think I'm half dreaming. So I just I'm like, I let it go. I'm like, OK, I'll call him when I wake up. Maybe he's just maybe he's just smoked out already. <laughs> he just decided to buzz me. And he calls me again. I'm like, OK, what's up, dude? So I answer the phone. He's like, hey, dude, I don't know if you're aware of what's going on. I'm like, what? What are you talking about, man? He's like the fires. I'm like, what? What? I'm like, what are you talking about? And he goes, okay, I was driving to work from Petaluma to Runner Park, and I could see the flames over the hill. He's like, I think you need to you need to wake up, check the news, see what's going on, bro, because you may need to evacuate. I'm like, holy crap. I look outside, and there's smoke everywhere. Uh, I go upstairs, and I look out my window, the bedroom window, and I could see pink, and it's not the sunrise, and it's over the hilltop. I'm like, holy shit. So I'm like on Twitter. I'm on Facebook trying to figure out what's going on because we don't have cable. Uh, I'm on Google. And uh, I, I kind of wake up Priscilla, uh, or she, I think you woke up, basically, because I was just kind of standing there. I and I have this, I have this uh, little mantra that I go by, like, um, okay, immediately stop freaking out. Like that's well, my mode. But and I he's wasn't like, freaking out. You need out. to get. He's like, no. you need to get up and you need to pack a bag. I didn't say that. No, 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 no. no. Perception. I think you were just half asleep. I might have been. All I was doing was calmly standing by the window, looking and tinkering with my phone. And and you said I think that you should pack a bag. And I said, I already have our entire family packed in an emergency bag. It's by the door. We can, or by the door in the garage. Always, you guys, I packed this emergency bag. It's like the best thing what, ever. What you asked me what I was doing, and I told you it was happening. And I said, I think we may need to, I'm trying to decide if we need to pack up, uh, but I'll let you know. Yeah, he was actually very calm. So I, yeah, I, I wasn't freaking out. I just, it was perception. And so. I laid in bed, checking the phone, checking everything, kind of getting up and looking, and I started noticing cars were driving up and down the street, and we have a very quiet street. So at, uh, what was it, 8 o'clock, I made the call. Like, it's they're evacuating certain parts of neighboring areas close to us, and I said, I think we should, and there was a voluntary evacuation on Katata. Actually, he, he just barely, very calmly, like, I was sleeping on the floor because our bed sucks. So, <laughs> <laughs> was, so he like. Oh yeah, we were both on the floor that yeah, night. So, so so he like kind of like twiddled my toes and he's like, okay, sweetheart, time to pack up and go. Like just all calm, like we're evacuating our home. And I'm like, okay. And it's really crazy because I have no attachment to our stuff and neither wow. do you like, I got to tell you guys, it is pandemonium here. Like, it is the apocalypse here. There are fires in the streets. There is smoke. The sun is red. You go outside. Ashes come down on your head. Like, and people are freaking out. They're at the pharmacy. Like, shelves are empty. Yeah. Like, every Dude, store that you water, go in. The gas station today, we went to get water first. The water's all gone. I got, I like, I look for the Aqua Phoenix. I like the taste of Aqua Phoenix. Gone. Freaking apocalypse. You know what was left? Apocalypse. You know what was left? Arrowhead. I fucking hate Arrowhead. It tastes like butt. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking like if butt had a, a, a if butt was like from Pell and it was served up on an ice cream cone. That's what Arrowhead water tastes like. Here you go. Blessings from hell. And all. And I saw two Dasani's. I grabbed them. I got the hell out of there. So, you know, basically oh, she, right here. Oh, there, right here. Yeah, there it is. Here, here, Dasani, cheers. Cheers. Boom. Right boom. boom. Dasani. Cheers. So, you know, what she's saying is not an exaggeration. This is literally, you know, that day. Santa Rosa burned to the ground. 
I mean, a good portion of it. Several of our friends lost their homes. I'm talking like our programmer lost his home. Yeah, Cole, Cole lost his home. Uh, a good friend. I mean, I'm talking like friends that I went to high school with. I'm th- entire subdivisions leveled, and, and you can't really see the devastation from the freeway when you drive by. If you get into the subdivisions, you you go and you look. I mean, I'm talking like what were homes? All this less left is a gas line. I mean, everything was gone, like gone, and now. If you drive through, you can still see smoke billowing from the hillsides, and it's literally within you know a mile of the freeway. And everybody's like, "Which way is the wind blowing?" Because it could come our way. A hundred and what are we at? One hundred thirty-eight thousand acres right now, I think, is what we're at yeah. that have burned in our area. And I mean, we are we're flooded in smoke. We're wearing masks. Well, I mean, we're not. We probably should be. Everybody's wearing masks because like of, sixteen people lost their lives and five hundred are missing. Five hundred missing. Yeah. Wow. I don't know what that means. I'm like, okay, what do you mean missing? So you know, shit's been going down. And here, you guys, guys were in Sonoma County, Napa Valley, so people are like losing their vineyards. Like, God help the wine. But well, basically, people are freaking out. I mean, yeah, they're literally freaking out. And it's it, it is very much like apocalypse here. I don't know how else to put it. But what I will tell you is, we were out. For a, for a day and we were allowed to come back from our evacuation and within moments of coming home two earthquakes oh yeah the Kenwood like, earthquake we're sitting there okay so it was we small filmed, it was like a 2.9 but i don't know if you guys have seen our video that we made out in uh that's actually gabe's parents backyard in sebastopol that video that we just came out with um body spartan it's um what do we end up calling it i think we called it wake up it wake starts up, with priscilla yeah. talking there's a beautiful like plum tree behind her and it's all outdoors and we she talks about what's happening it's a really cool cinematic uh video it's short it's like two minutes long or i think it's a minute actually you know what happened i I got to tell you, I'm so bummed. It was a minute and 30 seconds long. And there was, for some reason, there was some little tiny bit of film way out, like a two minutes and 30 seconds. So there's like a minute of dead space at the end. Oh my I gosh. That's but it had so many hilarious. views. I didn't want to, I didn't want to kill it because it had so many views. I'm like, ah. Uh, we're like, oh, <laughs> oops. Uh, and there's no way to trim that stuff on Facebook. So, so I'm um, sorry. But what we're saying is that the fear is real, man. I'm talking like. People don't know what to do. There's so much shit people are spewing like, we got to get out and this is happening and this section is evacuating. And so you like Sean came over the other day. He's like, yeah, my uh, my girlfriend's grandma lives here and she had to go run home because she heard they were evacuating. I'm like, wait, that's like a mile from us, dude. It's like, yeah, yeah, she heard they're evacuating. And I literally got on the internet. There's no evacuation happening. I drove over there. There's nothing happening. I'm oh, like, gossip it, like flies. It's, it's so crazy. I'm talking like there's shit in the freeways. Like I was, I took a ride yesterday. I went on the R1. I took it out to Skaggs is where I always go. And this is where I took Priscilla and Mia today to, up by Lake Sonoma. I mean, there was shit all over the freeway. And I'm thinking I probably shouldn't be riding on the way home. Somebody like the top of their big old container flew out of their fucking trailer at me today. On the other side of the freeway, there's garbage bags everywhere. I mean, people are going nuts right now. It's it's well, they don't know what to do. It's fear based. Well, imagine like one second you're going to work and kissing your wife goodbye and like by little doggies, by little kid, like and then you leave and then you go to sleep and you wake up the next morning and you're in 80s. You're like, okay, I am surrounded by fire. My house burns to the ground in one day. I mean, these people are definitely going through. We're all I mean, Gabe and I are not you. Okay, let me put it this way. This is beautiful. You ready for this? You can be in a devastating situation. And you don't have to be someone who suffers. You do not ever have to suffer no matter what goes on. Suffering is a choice. Devastation, not a choice. You go through really, really difficult times. Okay, not a choice. But suffering states Uh, are choice. Here's a good one. The danger is real. But the fear, fear is a man-made construct in our brain. Mm -hmm. Danger is absolutely real. There's a fire burning, you know. 10 miles from us right now and the winds could shift. This is there danger? Yeah. Fear is something that we create and we worry about it and we make it. It's a construct in our brain that man has created. It's not real. We choose to be fearful. I mean, I lit- it's crazy. I watched something that Will Smith was saying not too long ago. I think it was like three or four days ago about skydiving. And he was talking about how he was super fearful. Like he, his buddies called him out on a dare or something like that. And he was sweating it the whole night, sweating it all day the next day, super nervous in the plane, super nervous, you know, um, getting ready to go. And he goes, people don't get nervous. Why would you be nervous until you actually step out of the plane or your feet are at the door? He goes, there's no reason to be fearful. Fear is something you make up. Cause like the night before you in the plane, no. The morning that you're driving there, you're actually in the plane. No. 
Are you strapped up with a parachute? No. So why are you fearful right then and there? Because your brain is making it up. And it's funny because he said they count one, two, and on two, they push you out. Like you're with your jump master and they push you out because <laughs> people so grab up. the door on three. <laughs> they freak out and grab the door on free. Which is why you say, three. don't think, just do. That's yeah. Don't think, just do. That, like as soon as you start thinking about it, you start doubting yourself, start getting fearful. But the other thing he said, which is really cool because there's so much, so much happened this week and it was all fear based and like it's about conquering fear is really what we're talking about. He was saying, once you are falling, it's pure bliss. And he said, the moment of maximum danger is the moment of minimal fear. Now that is profound. I experienced that this week. I had a track day with the bike and I'm ripping around turn six at, I don't know how many, it was triple digits. Like, I don't want to tell Priscilla how fast I was going, but my knee is dragging on the ground. The bike's at the maximum lean angle and I'm calm. Like I'm breathing through my nose calm and there is no fear. There is only focus and bliss. And I'm not thinking of anything but the turn ahead of me. So what was missing? Nothing. Resistance. Oh, there was none. But exactly resistance was missing and without resistance there is no fear because there's nothing to resist when you're in a love and peaceful kind of state and so the first thing that we're going to talk about are the three truths about fear and we're going to tell you how to command your fear as we do this let's relate this back to the fires and the vegas and let's everything so people can see real life examples of let's how do this, this. Is. so hit us with the three truths all right so the first one is no one can make you think or feel any way you choose your thoughts. And basically a feeling is the acknowledgement that you have a high or low vi vibration. So let's take example. Um, oh, I just I'm not feeling good today. You're acknowledging that you are in a low vibrating state or you can say, oh, my gosh, I'm so happy or I'm so grateful or I'm so in love. You're acknowledging a high vibrational state. And you choose what that state is. Well, you know, and I wish Brandon was here for this one because this is a really good example. Military, you, you know, military guys, they can choose to feel fearful or they can stay the course. And I, I wasn't in the military, so I really don't have the authority or the experience to speak on this. But I know like when, you know, from talking to certain people that have been in the military, there's a way about you. If you let fear take over, you're fucked. You're dead. Like you are dead. This is not like, oh, I'm going to jump out of a plane with a parachute on or, oh, I'm going around. A t I'm racing my motorcycle. I'm going to go around a turn or there's a fire burning. I'm a little nervous. They're like, if I get fearful and I fuck up, I'm dead. I get shot in the head or I bleed out. I get shot in the heart or I get shot in the stomach and it takes three days to bleed out. You know, this is like you, you're calm. It's a choice that you make to be fearful. And that's like such a sign that we create with our minds, too. You know, like we're creating scenarios and causing them to be active in our lives by the thoughts that we think. Oh, that goes so, so deep. Double slit test. I mean, I don't even know where light. to start with that. And it gets me excited because I love this. Cr I love talking about this. Yeah. Yeah. And because my whole life, like it was, I thought the way that the Bible was presented to me was not the way that I believe it to be having experienced it. It's like, oh, you know, you're created by God and you basically are his little robot buddy and he's up in heaven, like so far off and commanding you what to do and you have to do it and everything is predetermined and nick, 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 you're uh, no, we're given free will. We are created at the hand of a masterful, infinite obsessingly in love with us creator who has created us to create our own lives and to choose. We get the decision. Like, is it the Lord's will? Do I go right? Or do I go left? Like, which is the military, right? Which is the military? <laughs> left? And, and God's like, what pleases you? So my sweet you person, you what pleases you? No fate, but what we make. I don't know. It depends on how you define fate. I don't want to get into semantics at all, but I do feel that well, we choose the course and that we cause things to happen or not well, happen in our be life because control. we don't have faith. Control. Okay. Fate, fate means predetermined. So if, you know, this is my fate, this is my predetermined path in life that was chosen for me and I can't change it. See, I used to think that's what it was and I was but deeply depressed and not sure why. No fate, but what we make. 
Okay, with with that definition, absolutely, I agree with that because I realized that I was able to pull myself out of a depressed state when I realized, wait a minute, I do get to choose what happens next. I do get to follow my passions. I do get to create with my mind and I do make things happen according to how I feel about them or what I think about them or what I believe about them. And my God looks at me and is like, you delicious little creature. I could just squeeze your freaking face because I love you so much. He's not looking at me seeing all the things that I do wrong. I'm just going to go ahead and say that there's there's some deep down pent up. It's excitement. uh, It's just shit that went on from all the years of being taught something. And when you realize it's different and you actually open your mind and you you expand your mind. There's a lot of passion behind that is what I hear. But nobody ever meant to hurt us. Oh, and by the way, guys, uh, for those of you that are thinking Right now, yes, that was a Terminator quote. No fate but what we make. So, Oh, was it? Yeah, you wouldn't know that. It was Judgment Day. Adorable. Yeah, but I had, Love to, it. I had to throw it out there. Some of those things are just profound. But Totally. Yeah, you know, this also applies. And we're not knocking any religion, any whatever, anybody's beliefs or anything. All we're saying is this is what we have found to be 100% true. And I don't think anybody tried to hurt us by delivering their truth to us. They were just doing now, what people's they thought intentions are, are general. I believe that people's intentions are generally good. But it, along the lines of no one can make you think or feel any way. We choose to feel certain ways. We've said that before. And this goes beyond being fearful. This is actually applicable to everything. I'm talking about how you run your daily life. You know, I was a very angry person growing up and I don't know why. I think I was, you know, my dad had kind of a short fuse and like he was never like abusive to us. But he just had a short fuse, he had a short temper. He got hot. He got mad. He's still like he's cooking in the kitchen. God bless it all. You know. <laughs> so I had this short fuse that I think I I think it's all learned behavior some way or another. And I had to learn to deal with that. You know? And you married a lamb. Yeah. But but I was like, slay me. I mean, a, it's okay. Maybe more like a you kitten. can you can step on Meow. me. Meow. It's like, you know, to my own detriment. As long as everything's <laughs> okay with you. And we converged in the middle. He made me powerful, and I helped him find his power well, by also, containing his anger and making years it something. of uh, years of pro hormone use too in WWE when we're trying to like before we even knew they were detrimental and they were like and this basically is stuff, legal steroids. This is stuff he got at GNC. You guys like this is well, yeah, just talk about average that and we talked about pro hormones stuff. on other podcasts and I, I'm, well, not a, people are I'm like, not ashamed to say a lot I of people them. don't know what pro hormones well, are. Okay, so. so anybody that wants to know what a pro hormone is, it's basically a legal steroid. It's a steroid that is an oral. So you you take a pill. And it is the, the chemists have basically rearranged a carbon molecule here or, you know, some other molecule there so that it doesn't have the same structure as a known steroid. And when you piss, you don't piss the same metabolites. And so it's undetectable. However, when they were brand new, when I was in college, nobody knew what the fuck they were. They were just like literally for sale on or at GNC. Like we would me and Rocky, my buddy Rocky uh, has a twin named Buck. Uh, pretty cool guys. But uh, Rock and I would work out all the time. And we'd go into GNC. We'd buy these things. They're called uh, poppers. They were by uh, Pinnacle. And it was Anderson. How does Young. that not just like scream danger? It doesn't. Oh, it like, let's go get some poppers. It, like, it, that can't be good. You know, uh, but gain, it just said gain muscle mass, you know, with these Pinnacle <laughs> yes. poppers. Like, okay, what do you chew up? You put them on your tongue? Sweet. Okay, cool. Like, you know, if it's FDA Give me the approved, cat. So we're I don't know. good. Like, why would I worry about <laughs> well, it? Well, like, take them. It's not a steroid. I'm not sticking anything in my butt. It's I'm literally chewing up a pill <laughs> and I'm swallowing it. I'm like, what's the big deal? That's the way we looked at it. We didn't know what it was. And then all of a sudden, you know, the Barry Bond scandal comes out with Balco and the clear and all that stuff. And you lost Mark me. McGuire Wire is using Anderson Dion. You and lost me at stick it in your butt. <laughs> I'm like, oh what? That, I, there's a lot that I do not know about steroids. That's the push plug. Remember, we talked about that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> that's so marketable. So the, the, what I'm saying is that it, you know, it does increase testosterone levels. And so, you know, I was an angry son of a bitch for some unknown reason. We didn't know so why. So imagine like, a girl with really bad raging PMS uh, plus cojones. Jesus. Like, <laughs> oh my God. How many years have we been together? Twenty. Mm-hmm. 20 how many months in a year 12 mm-hmm. what's that do the math on that it's like 200 something months i've just been like ah, don't cut my face off <laughs> 200 months of please don't cut my face off <laughs> and then the other three weeks i'm a bastard <laughs> but you know the point is i had to make a but choice. wait a minute but wait a minute really no i'm just i'm nice I have my 1% times when I freak out, just like everybody else. But I choose. So what I had to do, I had to learn that 
anger is a feeling just like fear is a feeling and you can sense the physiological changes coming on with fear like for me my heart starts getting pumped up a little faster and you start you might have the, you know the hair on the back of your head stand up or you might get goosebumps or you might feel flushed actually it's very similar to being angry it's a physiological it's a state change it's a physiological state change that you encounter and when you start looking at that from a third party perspective and you're in this cycle like over and over again like i would get mad i would get mad i would get mad i would get mad or i'd be fearful i'd be fearful when you start recognizing those changes the physiological changes that are part of the cycle that you're in where it's like oh i'm something happened i'm mad something happened i'm fearful you can change that oh my gosh i love how you just put that to just right now i love how you kind of broke that down and sliced and diced it because when i was tucking me in bed tonight um i told her i said doesn't it feel good to feel the spirit and the spirit feels like love and i said what does fear feel like? Does fear feel like you're looking towards the spirit and listening and, and feeling the spirit? Or does it feel like you're looking away? And she's like, well, it feels like you're looking away. And I said, how about anger? Looking away. How about hate? Looking away. What things make you feel like you're looking towards the spirit and being drawn towards the spirit? And she's like, love. And so that's basically like the scale of vibration. Low vibrations are vibrations that just frankly do not feel good. And high vibrations are the ones that do feel good. The ones that are high vibrating feelings are the ones that are going to shut down fear. And we're going to get into that in just a little bit. But first, we're second, <laughs> first and also second. Well, before we go to talk- second, I, oh, okay. I think it's really important, like channeling and, con- and controlling your fear, your anger. It also plays into controlling your emotional state when you get up in the morning and you decide to do your fasted cardio. You're going to the gym to do your workout anything fitness related. I mean, you can choose to let anything else during your day affect you or you can choose to stick to the plan and stick to the goal. I mean, people get pissed off all the time when they're coming up from work with road rage. You can choose to be pissed off when that person cuts you off or you can choose to be a dick and not let that person in or, you know, a million things and you can be pissed off or you can just chill. Like you literally, I, I ride and with people you all chill, the time. when you chill, you are the most powerful. You ever, well, you you ever are, been in a car with somebody that talks to other cars? No, I haven't. <laughs> I did that for years. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? What are you doing? dude? Come on, bro. Like, speed up. Like, I mean, everybody's been in a car with somebody that talks to other cars. Now we say with me other in the back seat. Other can't hear them. Okay, you can go first, friend. Would you like to go or first, friend? I just don't say anything anymore. I don't. I try not. To, I, I can't remember Ooh, last time I said he must something. be busy. He yeah. must be in a hurry. Oop. So go ahead, friend. <laughs> where do you put your energy? Do you choose to expend it on stupid stuff like that, or do you choose to put your energy or save it for things that actually matter, things that require your energy that are going to further you towards your goal? So you control the way you think when you step into that gym. Are you going to let everything that's happened during the day affect you? Are you going to let the moments leading up to your gym time affect you? No. You're going to choose to focus on the goal. You're going to choose to remain calm in road, you know, road rage situations or whatever. You're going to choose a positive attitude. And I want to jump into this second truth about fear. Yeah, I really want to know these because I see Gabe's bedtime fears on the notes here. Well, I'm excited to see what you have to say about that. So the second truth about fear is that we can choose how we feel by selecting images that we want to hold in our mind. So anybody ever have bedtime fears? The monster under the bed or yeah. like the ghost in the hall. I was scared yeah. of demons, of course. I was a pastor's kid. I was oh. scared that there were demons in the trees. I was scared of fucking aliens. Okay, let's get into I don't into know that. why. I, the, let's talk about that for a hot thing, minute. The grays with the big eyes. Like I was scared of them. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I just, mm-hmm. they scared the shit out of me. Okay. I don't know why. I maybe watched too much X-Files. So there's know. little Gabe in bed. How old were you? Dude, I had night terrors until I was 16. Frozen with, I mean, I'm talking paralyzed with fear where I couldn't move and my heart would be racing and I'd be able to like barely squeak out like, mom, or dad. And they come running wet. I'm like, oh, I'm scared. <laughs> you know? But that's real. He was having a real experience because it was real in his mind. Or I would, I would make the, uh, like the straw with the sheets. So like I get fresh air, you know, you, you cover up yourself completely, but just your mouth would be out just enough to get fresh air. So you wouldn't suffocate under the bed. <laughs> See, we laugh I, about it but now. I was scared but... that, that whatever was out there was going to find a way in. But literally for some reason, I thought that there were just aliens outside my window every night and they were going to take me away. And do, like I wouldn't even take the trash down. My parents lived back behind these two homes. They all share a driveway in Sebastopol. 
They got an acre of land back behind. You'd never know they live back there. We got this long driveway and there are no lights on this driveway at night. And every Tuesday night with garbage night. And I hated taking the trash. I get a flashlight. I'd walk down in the dark and it was like 30 yards. There's a lot of shit that can happen. At the, I'm talking like people have been abducted and picked up by saucers and flying shit. You're not laughing. I'm. This is, I mean, it, <laughs> hey, bro, this is your simulation, just, man. These are, the these are your really, bedtime these fears. These are things I really went through when I was See, a kid. I never, I never think about aliens unless I'm like, like blessing and praying for the universe and for well, whatever's and out there. As I mentioned on another podcast, the alien from Alien, the xenomorph. After I saw that thing, man, I could not go to the bathroom by myself for like a month. So I needed my mom to hold my hand. <laughs> so what you were experiencing was 100% real because you had that image in your mind of I Xenomorph. Sure hell thought it was Xenomorph. Real. I got this screwed well, up on the other the podcast Xenomorph too. was the alien from Alien. But in reality, my biggest fear were like the greys, like literally aliens, the unknown, you know, the things that come down and abduct because people. Because you believe that they might cause harm or cause fear or i just might see one and freak out i don't care if it's friendly or not like i can't handle the thought of seeing an actual gray so these are your fears yeah even these today. are your images i'll be point blank honest with everybody listening right now when i go downstairs by myself at night and i will I, i'll admit i watch a little tv at night i tell you guys turn the fucking tv off but sometimes i gotta unwind i'll turn on family guy or something at, at you know this is eleven forty-five at night and i'll be asleep by midnight but when I wake up at three o'clock in the morning on the dot every fucking morning, I get chills and we don't have uh, we don't have curtains. I leave the blinds open because it's just nice. I'm like, something's watching me. Something is watching me. And I get up very quietly and calmly and I just beeline it for the stairs <laughs> and I just look, make sure Mia's OK. And then I just very calmly slide into bed next to Priscilla. And I'm like, you know what? She sleeps closest to the door, so they're going to get her first. So I want to, and I'm not even, I'm like, homie, come in. Let me like bake some keto bread or something. Just sit at my table. Like, I'm not, I don't know. That doesn't get me. Death doesn't get me. Like aliens don't get me. There are other they things. They might. They might. Bring it, dude. I've been protecting you for years. You don't even know it. Okay. Thank you. Yay. The tinfoil hats I keep making. Right. Yeah. See, I struggled with fear my entire childhood as well until I realized that I'm not a victim of what happens to me and I'm in control of my mind. So let's take Mia, for example, because now, you know, history repeats itself. She saw Thriller. Oh, I was a pastor's kid and I was never allowed to watch music videos. And I was playing Thriller for her. This is the king of pop Thriller video. The ultimate in cool. Yeah. Yeah. So Mia does independent study, which means that Gabe and I are teaching our five year old everything. And during history, we teach her about the greats. We teach her about Elvis Presley, who changed rock and roll and music forever. We talk about Michael Jackson, who completely revolutionized the music industry. We we go through everything that interests her. And anyways, I accidentally showed her that video, not knowing that there was a terrible were- werewolf. Well, the, yeah, the intro to, to Thriller, everybody's forgotten about. They ever seen okay. the thriller video, but I nobody felt really. So bad. You go back and watch the whole thriller video because I forgot about that part too till I saw she it after you told me. Never had a fear in her little life. She's five it's, years old and so everything is daisy. For anyone that hasn't seen it or needs to remember, it's this scene where Michael Jackson is talking to a, a, a girl, and he's in his red, cool red jacket that he was wearing. And, and he goes, there's something that you need to know. I'm not like the other men. And I'm not then, like the other boys. Uh, yeah. And then and the full like, moon appears. What? And he makes this, like, for what was in the 80s, the coolest transformation to a werewolf you've ever seen. It, you know, and for me, I was born in 78. So whatever. I was I was seven or eight. I was older than Mia when I saw it. I might have been 10. And I just don't want her to hear. She's not going to hear. Okay. Uh <laughs> you know, I Michael Jackson makes this like he they put in these cool yellow contacts, werewolf eyes, and he, he makes this like raw sound, like get away, and it's this like demonic sounding voice. And this horrible and, face. So, anyways, my child looks at it and her face drops, and it is like a split second, and that image is ingrained in that child's mind. Never had a fear never about go anything. Away. You can't get rid of it. And and there it is. So she's sitting here terrified in bed, and she's like, oh, What do I do? I'm petrified. And so I said, Mia, you see that image in your mind? She's like, yeah. And I said, now I want you to put an X through it 
And I want you to imagine a puppy that's in one of those little kitty swings. You know those little kitty swings that like they go four ways. The little kitty, baby, kiddy, like the little K-I-D-D-Y. like a baby okay. swing. Yeah, and put the puppy in the baby swing and swing it back and forth. Now, uh, once you're done with that image, I want you to focus on a basket of bunnies. And we're going to think of a, ba- a basket of fluffy bunnies. What's cuter than a basket of bunnies? Um, nothing except for maybe a puppy in a swing. So I gave her all these images. And so every time she thought of the werewolf, she would start laughing so hard because there were these, you know, bunnies in blankets and like, you know, basket, kitties basket in, of bunny and kitties kittens in, in pajamas and like, you like know, a puppy in a kid swing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We love animals. So you basically so. reprogrammed her mind. Exactly. She reprogrammed her mind. Oh, you, you showed her how to reprogram her and mind. As a little we, narrow hacking, as we call it. As we grow up and we grow into adults and there are fires and there are earthquakes and there are shootings. We have the power to choose the news or choose gratitude. We can keep that image of fear and fire and um, oh my gosh, I'm so out of control because everybody's got a gun and everything's happening to me and anything can happen. Or we can be like, I am in a state of love. I'm in a state of power. I'm, I, I, that's never happened before. I've never oh, been in a fire like this before. Let's talk about the news for a minute because the let's news is the number one source of fear for this entire fucking country. Everybody is so zoned into their cable TV. Uh, you know, they sit in front of it for so, I think the average is like four hours a day. You don't even realize it. You're, you're zoned into that. You're a fucking zombie. And then the news comes on. And let's tell, let's just be straight honest about what the news really is. It's fear based. It's, other people's opinions and hype. It's sensationalism it's, uh, it's of hype. an event because they told us they're like Santa Rosa's completely annihilated. There's not a single building standing, and people are crying in the well, streets in gas masks. I mean, don't get me wrong; it's it's pandemonium. People are fearful. And we drove through Santa Rosa today, and we're like, that building's still standing. Hey, look over there. There's a green yeah, it's tree. Not like a nuclear bomb went off. I right? mean. I mean it doesn't look good. Santa Rosa, okay, but let's put it, it this way. Santa Rosa good. is a big city, right. and the whole thing didn't burn. A portion of it burned, but not the whole thing. But the news, I mean, if, if, when was the last time you guys heard something good on the news that wasn't like, you know, oh, and this morning, they threw that <laughs> shit in there just for fun. They're like throwing like one good thing just to leave you like, oh, and yeah, we had this like this kid who. Uh, no, they break. don't. They do. Like, the morning shows do occasionally. Oh, Lord. Every now and then. But it's so, it's like the 1% thing. News focuses on fear because why? Fear controls the masses. You have a fearful country, you are in control. And they. They do not give the whole story by any means. And it was interesting because Mia never gets the news ever. And when we evacuated, went to my parents' house. My parents still have TV. They still watch TV. I'm trying really hard to get them away from it, but they still, they're stuck in their ways. What's on? The news. And, the news is on. And Mia's in the next room playing with dolls. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's go play in the back room. You know, so I lock us in this like small room and she's like, mommy, I heard about what they said. The world is devastated or the the the, the, the county is devastated. And I'm like, you were playing dolls. Yeah. She wasn't even in front of it. She just heard it. She heard it. So that's what in the it next does room. People. Like it was you know, crazy. If that does that to a, a, a five year old. Imagine what it does to somebody who's been watching it for years. And the point is. It literally programs you to be fearful. And shut the fucking news off. I mean, get get the news you need. Like, I need to know. Or, or do what you feel you want to do. But I want to ask you this. How do you feel after watching news that day? Are you in a fearful or anxious state? Do you have anxiety? If you have anxiety and you are still watching the news, shut off the news and tell me how you feel in a week. Well, Here's what I did. I subscribed to Nixle. And I got these updates for my zip code. And my parents zip code. Don't do it. When it's a trap. They would update us when something was happening. Like they would tell us about surrounding areas. I get a text maybe once every hour or two. Katati's fine. No problems. Uh, Roner Park is under value. Like I would, I'm like, okay, cool. Those things are helpful. That's, yeah. I, that's information I want to know. I don't want to sit there and listen to the news anchor go, so you're, so you're a random person calling in from this area. Tell me, can you see the fires? Is it, how devastating is it? Tell us, how are you feeling? You know, how, how bad is it? Is It's very sad, isn't it? Like they're, they're just feeding this information to the public about being fearful. Like why the fuck would you do that? But they want a good story. That's what makes a good news is Is that really a good story? Is sadness and despair? Or is it a good story about rising from the ashes? Oh, it keeps them watching, though. All these people pulling together. If you rise from the ashes, the story's over. Across the street from where my parents live is Annalee High School, filled with evacuees. Mm -hmm. 
instead of it being sad and despair, the town pulled together. They actually sent a text out on this Nixle thing that said, please do not bring any more food or blankets. Handling High School is full. <laughs> we so have enough. abundant. But guess what? You didn't see that shit in the news. All you saw were other evacuation centers. They they seem because to if they just show the kindly skip over the good shit. They well, if they show the happy ending, the rise from the ashes, then it's over. They need to keep the story going so that people will continue to watch because that's how they get so paid. It's like I always say, control what you put in your fucking ears and what you see because what you see and what you put in is exactly what you're going to get out. I've told people this since we started this podcast. I've been saying it in every single program. Turn off the fucking TV. But control we're, but what you put again. In. We're not trying to tell you what to do. No, I am. I'm okay, trying to tell Gabe's you what to do. Telling you what to do. <laughs> I'm trying to Gabe's, tell you what to do. Turn off the goddamn TV. Okay, Gabe's telling you what to do because he's big and scary. We we all do what he says. But I'm just saying, if you have anxiety, wow. if you're depressed, if you're feeling hopeless, if if you have any symptoms of dysphoria in any way, analyze what is going into your mind with the boob tube, and if it doesn't feel right. If it doesn't feel awesome, if you don't feel healing within a week of shutting off that TV, go back to it. But you will instantly begin feeling that healing. After a month, you're not going to miss the TV and you will become a new person because you're going to be putting things in your brain that feel good. And then we're going to go on to point three. Um, But you know what? Before that, we're going to just mark this number two. There's going to be a challenge at the end of this podcast. I'm going to tell you. Heck yeah. Keep going. Yeah, note taken. So anyways. Oh, and speaking of neurohacking, and he said, I know you want to yeah, get to that. Yeah, yeah, no, We're talking please. about neurohacking. Just, just to say it, Priscilla has neurohacked the hell out of Revolution, the program. And out of you. And this is, I'm going to And out of our child. Right here, right now, since you guys are all listening to this fucking shit. Shameless plug for Revolution. Guys, you got a girl, you got a wife, you got a spouse, you got to tell them about Revolution because there's neurohacking in there where it actually reprograms your brain. It's got this killer sleep audio that literally reprograms your brain for success. We're talking about how to do it. We're giving you tips right here on how to reprogram your brain in very basic ways, but it goes a whole step further with some other stuff that she does. She did a ton of research on this, a ton of, I mean, there was a a lot, a lot, a lot of hundreds of case studies, hours, hundreds of hours of, of research into this. The point is, it's loaded in the revolution program, which is also a cyclonic keto diet. And there's so much other good stuff in it. The point is 30 day free trial, bodyspartan.com forward slash revolution, bodyspartan.com forward slash revolution. Guys, tell your girls, girls, go get it. 30 days free. Point number three. Well, but I mean, if you're going to throw that in there just randomly, I'm going to say that it's not like what we're doing right now. There is some of this stuff in revolution, but what is involved in revolution is a sleep audio. So basically I speak to their subconscious minds and I convince them to be the woman that they've always wanted to be. The woman that you want to see on the other end of the <laughs> well, breakfast table. It. You just say it so much better. Than the me. woman that wants to be strong, be powerful, be emotionally balanced, work out, eat right, take care of her family, feel the power and and just everything that she wanted to be. I, I'm helping her become that while she sleeps. If she's diligent, if she's listening to it, some people it works after listening to it one or two times. That's very common. Will. But we don't claim that anything's going to happen before 90 days. So if she's well, listening to it every single day, here's what I want to know. It's going to make massive changes in her life. Will she become the kind of woman that will happily wash my compression pants after I've sat in them for three hours doing a podcast post-workout and I can literally feel the sweat fermenting inside of them. Have you ever seen that I keep tongs by the laundry is that what those are for? Mm-hmm. Oh. I, I, I pick it. No. <laughs> like sizzling hot tongs. And then I put them into the boiling water and then I pick up the compression pants and I put them in. <laughs> and I also stick a match <laughs> and then send it to Santa Rosa. No. Oh, gosh. Oh, oh. oh too soon. No. Too soon. Okay. Yeah. So point number three. We um, become what we think about. That's a good point. Real good point. Heck yes. So we talked about how to decide what you want to think about, how to create images, but you are going to attract more of what you're already focusing on. And I just want to hit on this because the reticular activating system in the brain latches on to whatever thought that you think, and it scans the horizons looking for things that match that. So I'm thinking... Hot boy, hot muscly boy, um, tall, dark, handsome. This true story. I'm just oh, saying. I am. But true story. From the time I was 12 to the time I was 14, 16, 
I knew exactly what I wanted in a man. And I scanned and scanned and scanned and they kept on coming up. Tall, dark, handsome man, you know, beautiful, stunning eyes, like square shaped fingertips. Jerk. Square shaped fingertips. You do. They're so gorgeous. Wait, they're kind of round. And then another one would come along and, you know, had all these qualities. Wait, these are not squares. Oh, maybe they are. They're a little squarish. Okay. Well, Brandon and Howard seem to think I have paws, so... I love your hands. They're big. So anyways, Carry on. Um, so I'd keep on finding these these guys, and every time I met one, and I'm like, "Wow, you're really insensitive." So I'd add the word "sensitive" to to what I wanted, and then I'd scan the horizon, scan. But I didn't even know I was scanning. My reticular activating system was at work, and when I laid eyes on that man, I knew that he was the one that I had desired the the man that I had been waiting for and that is how the reticular activating system well, let's, works let's give him a little you're, simpler uh, example I mean that's a great one there's nothing wrong with that example at all I mean it's very profound it's it's very true but uh, maybe a little more simpler that people can relate to that they so they better understand the reticular activating system would be something like the world you see uh, you, so, so wait, are we gonna wait you want to go to you want to go to blows is that what this is about you gonna let me talk he's gonna talk over me I don't I will but you take a swing at me? Come on. <laughs> so the world, the world is a Nothing. negative place. If, you, if you're watching on uh, the BTS episode, this is going to be, guys, there were no, no, no fist raise. I just literally said that. It'd be funny. So the world is a negative place. Bad things are happening. You There's are always fires. Me. There's always earthquakes. You're going to have more of that in your life because you're going to be looking for it in the media. You're going to be looking for people that are talking about it. However, if you're like, good things are happening to me, I have a loving marriage. Even when you don't believe it, if you say it and you embody it and you read more things that are like that or being fit is easy. Everyone around me desires a healthy lifestyle. So the reticular activating system, a really good example that would be, uh, you know, take my dad. When my brother died. My brother mm. drove a Lexus RS 300, like mm. a white SUV. Never saw one ever except for his. Suddenly after he dies, they're everywhere. Why? Because he's fixated on his brain has brought it to the front of his, we call it the reticular activating system. So as soon as you get something in your head and you realize it, you start looking for those things. You don't even realize it. So basically your brain's scanning the horizon for those kinds of things. It could be anything. I mean, it could be a white Lexus, you know, SUV. It could be. I don't know, P, what's another example? You know, if you want something that, you know, that you're desiring, it could be um, a certain protein powder. And all of a sudden you start noticing that, oh, there's commercials for it. Or maybe they don't do commercials for protein powder. Uh, it, I mean, it could be anything that your brain is desiring. But these things come to the surface and you see them because your brain is now looking for them. So what Priscilla is saying is that if you're fearful and it's in the front of your mind and you're looking for negative things, your brain's going to find them. It's going to scan the horizon and find everything negative, and you're going to pick up on it. Your brain is going to bring it to the front of your attention. They were there the whole time. These negative things were there the entire time, but because you're focusing on them, your brain's going to pick them up and bring more of them to your attention. However, if you're focusing on positive things, I believe this is what you're getting at. If you're thinking about positive things, perhaps those positive images we were talking about, your brain's gonna find more of those because the reticular activating system is scanning the horizon and everything that you see, all the input that comes into your your retinas, and it's literally calling out those things that you want to see. It's kind of like how your spinal cord works, where your brain is doing stuff, your brain is doing stuff consciously, but subconsciously, you're not even thinking about it, you guys. Your bodies are so incredibly masterfully created that there are messages being sent from your brain down the spinal column, causing your arms to move. Like your cerebellum is sending messages and saying, hey, motors, move. And before you can even think about what you're doing, you're picking up chopsticks or using a spoon. It's just like that. Your brain is responding to the programs that are already in place in your brain. Partially, they're subconscious from the way that you've been brought up. And partially they're from the things that you are putting in, which is why we go back to news and television. What are you putting in your brain? What are you listening to? And what are you choosing to believe? My success partner was, ah, oh, she was so profound today. And she was telling me, she's like, people say, th- oh gosh. And I could just think of 
instances that this happened this week, like, oh, yeah, life is short. Um, is it? And and you just you're like, yeah, but you know what? I actually don't believe that because I believe that the soul and the spirit are infinite. And so when I say life is short, I'm like, actually, I don't believe that. And I've been saying that. So when somebody says something that you don't believe, what if you take a second and just not agree? Like, you don't have to agree to be polite. Yeah, we're if trained to agree. That's if what it's school crap, does to us, by the way. If it's crap, don't say yes. Or life is hard. That's crap. Life's a bitch. That's crap. Like, I don't believe those things. I choose not to believe those things. Sometimes I'm tempted to believe those things, especially because I'm programmed all the time. Like, oh, yeah, it's oh the weather's so awful. No, it's not. It's cold. And I freaking love sitting by the fire in my cozy socks. It's because we were programmed as young kids to be agreeable. Brules. We were the brules, bullshit rules. Uh, that was a vision Lachiani thing. As kids, uh, this is one of the reasons that Mia does not go to traditional school. It's because it's literally programming. Like you were programmed to sit there, say yes, sir, no, sir, do exactly what you're told and be agreeable. You're not told, you know, they encourage obviously asking questions, but who fucking asks questions? You know, one person in the class that gets it. The other 29 or 39, or many people in the fucking class, they don't get it you know they they just sit there and they're agreeable and this goes all the way back i mentioned this in a, a previous podcast and i, I said it a lot but I, you know i gotta reiterate things because i know not everybody listens to every single episode uh there was a study done <clears throat> where a group of scientists noticed that or they created a test so basically like an aptitude test to determine um a level of genius and they gave it to very young children before they were entered into school. And what they determined is that every child in the test group had the potential to be a genius. They were testing at extremely high levels. Once they got into grade school, they decided to test them again. The percentage dropped massively. So the ones that were geniuses or had the potential to be geniuses the, the group of those kids became smaller. High school, even smaller. College, something like 1%. I don't remember the exact numbers, and I can look the study up for you guys, but I, they uh, the percentage was so low that it blew their minds. This was so profound that they had to redo the study with a completely another group of kids. So they followed this through for you know another another grade school set, and they had the exact same results. The point is, it totally one hundred percent school prevents you from being meeting your full potential. It makes you agreeable to all that shit that comes in your ears to what people say because we're programmed to go, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, I'll do my homework assignment. I will go to school. I will go to high school. I will go to college. I will get a good job. I will work for fucking 40 years of my life and I will retire and I will be quiet and I won't raise a stink in class and I won't raise a stink in life. That's what it does. It's, it prevents you from asking questions because you feel stupid when you ask questions because the other kids laugh at you or the teacher makes you feel stupid for some reason. That's what it fucking does. Or they does. just say sit down and shut up and you want to please, by nature, we want to please our School. teachers. We want to please the little situation. And so we learn to sit down and shut up. You know how many years it took me to reprogram my mind to speak out because that's what I was created oh, I was to do. I was a fucking introvert in high school. I didn't say shit until I was like 18 and started working at Safeway as a bagger. And I was forced. One of the rules was that you had to greet every person. And when you look at the receipt and the checker would say to them, oh, thank you, Mrs. Tuft. Then you have to say, okay, can I help you out, Mrs. Tuft? Can I get you help? I had to learn to be cordial. And you had to make eye contact when you walked down an aisle. You had to smile at everybody, ask if they needed help. Like I was forced and, to be and an we're not, introvert, whatever you call that. We're not here. And you completely made a turnaround. Oh, my goodness. Like, look at you now. Hey. Yeah, who would have thought I was a little nerdy kid that got a 4.0 GPA? Actually, 4.2 GPA. Big dork. Yep. That's okay. I'm, I, I'm like a D student, but I learned to get smart later. <laughs> oh, now you're a genius. Now I'm brilliant. Now I'm like, you went but the it's other only way. been three years. And we're not saying that everybody needs to train their child with independent study. For us, no, wait, whoa, it's been way more than three years. It was college when you learned that you were smart. No, honey. Yeah, because I sat there and I, I helped you. And that was my first step. That was my first token of belief in myself. Yeah. Then your personal training. So I was afraid. Then you got your 
freaking master sports nutrition where you scored in like the 90th I percent. still did you not like think the highest but I had scores excuses. in the state of California I had excuses to believe that I wasn't smart well it started like 10 years ago so I'm just those saying that were, for the record okay so those were tokens I mean definitely I was like a CD student and um, the first year we were married I was finishing my last year of college because it was a promise that he made to my dad. Hey, if we get married, she'll finish college. Oh, and I keep my fucking promise. And he keeps his promise. So we took a year off and then I went back to school my very last year. And I just, I was like, man, I just, I never got A's. And my senior year of college, when you get senioritis and you're just not into it, this man helped me get straight A's. And he did it because he marked up my papers. And I'm like, why didn't you just fix it? And he's like, sit down and learn. From from the red. Oh yeah, you wanted me to fix it. And for I you. would cry, and I would get so mad, and I'm like, "You're the worst husband ever." But he made me sit down and be diligent until I got it. But see, that's what you were programmed to do. You were programmed to, because you had an experience where people would do stuff for you. Oh yes, it's learned. That's behavior. how I got by. Yeah. But now, because of that, look how far that we've come, and Goodness this company has sakes. come. I mean, that's the that's the attitude that you have to take with you, whether you're in life, in family, business, or in the fucking gym. Is that especially in the gym no one can do this for you and it was always within me i just didn't see it i can point you, you have I to can, find a I way to bring believe a it. horse to water but i can't make him drink nobody's gonna do the gym for and me. now here what do i do um on in my free time i study neuroscience like <laughs> right. things have really changed but what, I, what i'm getting at like this i think this is really important because you know we are a fitness company we have to talk about fitness because you know, it is body spartan the point is you know I can mark up the paper all you want. I can point out how to do the, the exercises properly. I can yell at you all you want, uh, but ain't nobody going to lift that weight except for you. There's nobody that's going to push you you know, past the wall, as I always call it, where your physical limitation, your mind thinks your physical limitation is. But in reality, your body, you know, it's only 40% done. You got 60% left. That's fucking fact. Navy SEALs prove that shit. Nobody's going to do that except you. And so that was me grabbing those red marks and saying, I got this and, and fixing them and being up all night long till, you know, one in the morning, maybe. And then getting up at three to drive to San Diego to go to school. Yeah, I just, I got to say this. But I, you pushed me and let me know I, I, I could do it. Not, well, that's what I do for people that come to work out with us too. I push them. I help them unlock that ability. Yes. But nobody did it except for them. I just nudge them in the right direction. I, I dig around in their, you know, their brain. I figure out what makes them tick and then I just bring it to the surface. But it's not anything they couldn't do themselves. This is very reminiscent right now of a bunch of comments because I, I read the comments on Facebook a lot and when we get comments like, oh, yeah, dude, you guys are on fucking gear, this and that. You can go use steroids. I'm like, okay, cool, dude. I use pro hormones for a time in my life. And yes, I use testosterone boosters right now because we have a fucking testosterone booster on our shelf. That's what we use. And it's legal. Shut up. Yeah. I, I'm just like, what the, fuck, what the fuck is wrong with people, man? And I just go, you know what it really is? It's everybody who thought that someone was going to do the work for them. It's all these people that were raised and programmed that they can half-ass shit and get through life. You know, I don't know if I entirely believe that. I, I also do. believe that it's people trying to make an excuse for where they're at. Well, I fully I understand. Fully like, I can't get there, so I got to make an excuse to make myself feel well, better that I'm that, not there. That is what I don't I'm believe I can at. do that, it. Well, that's what I'm getting at. It's because these people have been taught that it's going to get done for them, or there's an easier way, or if they see something that they want and they can't get it because they gave it a little bit of a try, or they tried with the knowledge that they had and they couldn't get there oh they fucking cheated they did this wrong or hey, that's not possible or, I'm not gonna do it well that's bullshit because I did it I fucking did it I did the impossible I did what I didn't think was possible because I worked my fucking ass off Same. and it's not about you know it, it's it's not about oh it got hard and uh, I'm gonna get a personal trainer and he's gonna do it for me. no no, it got hard and I pushed through that shit just like you did, just like Howard did, just like Brandon did, just like Brian Cage does. When a shit gets hard, we push through it. We don't give up. I've fallen on my face so many times, not literally in the gym, but in, in attempts to get where I want to be in the gym or in life or in business. But did I give up? No. I found a fucking way that worked. I mean, Was I'd it even easy? say. Was it easy? Fuck no, it was not easy. It was some of the fucking hardest shit I've ever done. And just, I have pushed my body to the fucking limit so many times where people are like, how the fuck do you do that? Like, I've had Howard and Brandon be like, where did that come from? I'm like, I don't fucking know. I wanted it that fucking bad. Or even right, here's a great example right now. You know, Howie and I are in this contest and he's not here to defend himself, but I'm just saying, somebody's out drinking. And I ain't drink. Well, okay, I drank a little. Oh, that's a bad example. <laughs> we have a contest scene get the most shredded by December. 
and I think I'm doing pretty good because I fucking want it. And I have a better reason to want it because I'm trying to get a muscle and fitness shoot in December. So that's where I'm headed with Not this. a muscle and fitness shoot, a muscle and well, fitness cover. Yeah, I'm shooting for And you cover. never know if you get a cover until after the shoot is yeah, done. And it may not be muscle and fitness, maybe another magazine. We're going to submit to a bunch of them. But the point is, I got, you know, December at some point, I'm shooting. So I better be damn ready to go. So I've got some motivation to do cardio in the morning and in the evening. So the point is, ain't nobody going to do it for you. You got to do the work yourself and you can't half ass shit. You can't, you know, take something that's halfway done, expect somebody to do it for you. No, you got to do the work yourself. There's Listen, no though, other way around it. Like being peanut butter and jelly. I just want to take another approach because shove that jelly down your throat. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> so we take very different perspectives. Like Gabe will tell you what to do. And, and I just want to take a different perspective. I'm kind of like a mother hen. And I want to say, if that's you, if you think that you can't do it, if you think that Gabe's just on steroids or like I'm just some skinny girl that's had everything done for me, cheerleader in high school. Let me just say that was not me. I want you to look in the mirror and understand your own human potential is so far beyond what you have ever experienced. You are created and capable of doing anything that you can fathom. And when you step into that, you'll become an achiever. And you already are an achiever. You just need to experience the momentum of being an achiever. Feel it for five seconds. Think of a way that you've achieved in your life. Are you a good dad? Were you just the rock star football player in high school? Are you you diligent at work? Are you a good husband? Think of one area that you achieve in and transmute that power into the area that you most need it. All right, we're gonna crush this out for you guys. We're gonna talk about, you ready? Well, this is the last part of the segment, right? This is it. All right, we're closing up But we're gonna come with some, we're gonna come with 10 powerful tips and we're gonna break it down for you guys. How to command your mind back into your control. Maybe you've lost it. Maybe you're in a fear state. Maybe you're scared. Maybe you're angry. Maybe life feels out of control in some way. How do you get your mind back? Let's get you back under control. Number one, ask yourself, what do I want? Want a burrito. Do you really want a burrito? No, I I just said that to be funny. What's more important to you, a burrito or a six-pack? fucking cover. Boom. Right, why? Well, because that's how we get our message out. People see me on the cover. They go, oh, who's that guy? I want to learn more. Then all of a sudden, the the message about Body Spartan gets out, how we want to help people change their lives through fitness. Boom. We've changed the life. We've met our goal. Why does that matter to you? Because my brother fucking died. And I promised that I would never let another opportunity slip through the cracks to help someone. Why does that matter? So why do I want... Why does, why does it matter? I'm, I'm, what, what are you digging at? You said you, you don't want anybody else to slip through the cracks. Right. I missed an opportunity to help my brother before he shot himself. I didn't fly down when he asked me to. I never got another chance. That matters. Like, I missed an opportunity. It made me wake up that life, well, you said life isn't short. I'm like, yeah, life can be very short. We don't know that tomorrow is promised. Like Tomorrow isn't promised the to us. The physical human life. My dog went to sleep one night and then wasn't there the next day. And she looked totally fine. Like That was the end of it. So, of course, every life matters. If I can change or save one life at the end of the day... I've done what I set out to do. So it's your underlying goal to get in front of as many faces as possible because one of those faces is going to feel like they have no one. It's going to feel like they are at their end. And you are going to lead them to the answers that lets them know that they're not alone and that there is something so much greater than to sit on the couch watch their favorite show, go to sleep, wake up, work, get yelled at by their wife, watch TV, eat potato chips, go to sleep, do it over and over and over and over again. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So who's the person that's going to see that muscle and fitness cover that matters to you? What's really I don't I don't know. It's it's someone in need of something, someone that's, you know, on the edge, depressed. Like a like a Dwayne Fugate. Could somebody, be a Dwayne. Definitely could be a Dwayne. I mean, there's somebody who's popped a bunch of pills because they just want to end their life, 
and they see you and that feel hope that they can go on and they can feel something more in their life. Well, it's not about seeing me. It's about hearing the message. Isn't that you? I'm, I'm just the messenger. Exactly. It's not about self gratification or self glorification. This is about getting the message out there. But seeing you is seeing the opportunity is seeing that yes. maybe there's another way than just ending it all. And yeah. then maybe like Dwayne, they change their whole life. And suddenly, they're the next person on the magazine cover changing all these people's lives. Yeah, absolutely. All right. That is kind of the train of thought when you're thinking about your goals, when you're thinking about what you really want. And then understand that, number two, become the architect of your own reality by choosing how you want to perceive the situation. Are you tired? Are you exhausted? Are you annoyed? Or are you doing something that's creating an impact, something that's big? Uh, I'm just looking at, I'm having flashbacks to The Matrix. <laughs> I'm gonna, I bet you I can relate every single one of these points to the movie The Matrix. All right, let's I take swear. it from there. And this then. is just a total side funny note because it's when not you said funny, it's, it's brilliant. I thought about, I think in the second one there was the, he, uh, Neo met the architect who basically created The Matrix. Oh, wow. That yeah, was, it was creepy. Uh, what do I really want? Well, Neo wanted to be. Wanted the to know one. What the Matrix. Was. Yeah. Well, he wanted to know what the Matrix was, and then he wanted to basically free everybody from the machine control. This is awesome. I'm such a movie buff, guys. If you don't already know that, I love. But movies. oh my gosh, that's totally you. Like that is what you're trying to do. You're trying to free people from the machine. The machine is McDonald's. McDonald's is the machine. Coca Cola is the machine, and it's cranking out all of these lookalikes, lookalike, lookalike, lookalike. And Gabe's here saying, "Let's break free." I like that. Okay, so number three, feel free to bring it back to the matrix. Believe that you are able to draw from an infinite creator, like a divine source. And yeah. number four kind of goes along with that. It's believe that you're divinely led, supported, abundant. So it's like there's, there's a higher power. Some involved. people call it God. Other people call it the universe. But there's definitely, you know, in our opinion, there's definitely a higher power. It's that thing that you feel. What was it in the Matrix? Well, so number three, believe that you are able to draw from an infinite creator. Neo basically was able to draw from the source. Dude, that is what I would call God. If I could pick a name for God, I'd be like the source. Well, he was like the, the source anomaly. of energy. He was the anomaly in the equation. You're divinely led and supported. Everything led him to the source at the end of the trilogy. Not you know, spoiler alert, but this movie is what 15 years old. I so know, like, about, still a favorite. I don't know when it came out. Still a favorite. So number five, affirmations. So if you believe these things, like I am the architect of my reality. I believe that I am able to draw from an infinite creator. I believe or I know that I am divinely led, divinely supported. So this is self-affirmation. Basically, you reminding yourself of all these things. And not just about yourself. Not like, not only I am capable, but it's also about your surroundings. Like, good things are happening to me. I live in a good world. I live in a world where positive things happen. I live in a world where the fires aren't going to touch my house. I live in a world where I'm grateful. This is, you know, we live I am in the bubble of Sonoma County. Hey, we actually, by the national news, they are calling the little tiny itty bitty area that we are in as the bubble. They're calling it the bubble and they don't know why we have not ignited. I know why we have not ignited, but... It's kind of like the undescribed. Interesting. Are you in the bubble? Because I want to be in the bubble. Hey. I've been going easy on the protein and there's been no lighters. That's why we haven't ignited. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Number six. If you want more in your life or you desire something to be different, build that image clearly in your mind and plug into that infinite source. We kind of talked about this a little bit. You choose the image. So can you completely wrap your mind and all the intricacies can you put them all together and create this picture of what you want to create? Because I did that. Well, I was create a picture of what you would mean, create a picture of what you want in your life. Basically. Yes. So this is this is picking the image to um to fire off your reticular I, activating system is what you're saying. Can to I about. totally like just put this out here? This is crazy. This is an exact example of what we're going through now. It is so smoky outside. I can't take my baby outside to play. The the sun is red. There's like this haze. It's like living in a smoker's house or something like that. And you like walk outside, you gag, and the house is stuffy because you can't open up the window. I'm not meaning to complain because thank God for this home. Have like, you been I'm like so grateful. coughing up shit too? 
I've no. got like this thick like goo coming out of my lungs. No, now. just like a throat ache and ear ache and yeah, headache and too. stomach ache and yeah. stuff. But I mean, I'm fine or whatever. But I'm just saying. See that? Self-affirmation. I'm fine. Well, I kind of like negate it by saying or whatever. <laughs> that left space for other things. Anyways. <laughs> Things have been rough, you guys. We've we've done a lot of emotional um, or recovery and really good things. Have, could have things could have been worse. They could have been way worse. Okay. And I'm so grateful that we still have our home, dude. See so that? Much of See that. what I did there, guys? It's called living in gratefulness. Absolutely. So foot on your I I would absolutely just don't do the Brandon thing where you like spin me around. I will kick you somewhere so hard in those compression pants you wouldn't even believe it. Hey, I'm not saying I like pain, but I'm not saying I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> no spinning with the foot. That's all I'm saying. Um, so what was I even talking? See, I knew you were going to throw me off. All right. So Particular activity things, things have been less than desirable in this space. Oh, look at that. Number seven. And I went, wait, you're, wait, wait. You're choosing to believe that. <clears throat> Can I finish talking, Spoiler please? Alert. Okay. Be quiet. So what? <laughs> I want to say this thing. I mean, you talked over me earlier. I'm going to just. Okay, fine. Number seven. Shove that jelly down your throat. Choose to believe that things are good. <laughs> Number eight. Say your thing. Okay. So, <laughs> so things have been challenging, less than desirable. And I meditated today and I imagined just pure water, pure air, like fresh air, the, the sun just exactly as pure as I could possibly imagine it. Just beautiful California sun, greenery. Just, I, I had this beautiful vision in my mind. And Gabe walks in today, seeing that our child is like peeling the paint off the walls. Like uh, she's, she's so active. Nuts. We mostly teach her out in nature and that's where she learns the best. But today we were peeling paint off the wall because we haven't been able to leave the house. And I had this vision in my mind earlier and he's like, let's go to Sonoma, Lake Sonoma. And I'm like, there's nowhere that's clear. And this place was so beautiful, you guys. Well, and you never, I can't believe you've never been there before. I, I, I can't no believe I'd never. I feel like I've like prayed for and manifested yeah, this place way up in my entire life. Out Dry Creek Road. It's, it's, a, it's where I go to ride the bike. It's for cool. days. Yeah. Like, it's so and Not a soul beautiful. on the lake. Nobody I've, was there. In my 39 years of being on this planet, I've never been to that lake when there was nobody there. It was there. like a ghost town. It was, a, it was there just for us. It was amazing. And just, I was sitting out there, I don't know what you guys were doing with your barefoot, doing something, and I'm sitting at the end of the dock, and just this feeling of gratitude. I don't think I've ever been more happy in my entire life, just because it's the contrast. It's like the the, the heaviness of being in this one space, like being out in the vast, infinite area with like all the water and the trees. When you say one space, just, you're referring to being stuck in the house because outside is super smoky, and when you walk outside, you cough up a lung versus being uh, an hour and 10 minutes, hour and 20 minutes north where you can see the clouds of smoke if you look back, but if you look out at the lake, what you see are tiny little ripples in the water. You can take. He took the us to the most the amazing place. You guys, you I can't even believe it exists. Take your shoes off and leave them on the dock, and roll up your jeans and little cuffs like we did to look like look like idiots. But we still enjoyed and our it. biggest and we worry stuck our feet in the water. Our biggest worry was like bird poop. Like, come on! I mean, it was amazing. It was or so our chihuahua amazing. slipping through the cracks of the dock. I know her little <laughs> feet kept like going through the cracks. It was really cute. But you meditated, you visualized so, that, and it came to fruition. Well, I yes, and then I went out to the dock, and I'm just enjoying all of this. And I'm dreaming. Drinking it in, in your head and this little like otter comes like swimming up and I was trying it. I was trying. That's why I said, come bend down next to me. There's something you need to see. Yeah, I saw the otter. It was so amazing. So anyways, your reality really is created by holding that image and just completely having faith that you are supported divinely. Like it's, it's something that is within you and outside of you and all around you that is leading you, guiding you, pushing you towards things that are good. And number eight is you'll attract according to what you believe. If you believe crap happens, homies, chemosabies. That's what's that's what's going to materialize in your life. I mean, this is the law, basically the law of attraction. You know, you believe it. You know, this is what's you know, what you're going to get. The universe will open its doors to you. If you're positive about stuff, you're going to attract other positive stuff. If you're negative about stuff, you're going to attract other negative things. This is just something that we've experienced in our life. There's no science to back this up, but I can definitely say from experience, my 39 years around the planet, that this is the shit that is real. 
The moment I started focusing on positive things, good things started happening. Doors started opening. Opportunities just flew my way. I, I mean, it's very easy to get caught up in negativity. But if you focus on that, you're going to go down the drain. You'll, you'll circle that downward spiral. And if you focus on positive, you're going to attract more positive stuff. And That's I love that you said that. And I love that you're talking about Matrix because step number nine, this is totally going to tie into what you're doing. Understand that everything that you're experiencing is really just a part of a simulation. And the only now, thing that is are real. Going to balk at this. So go ahead. You say your stuff. And I'm going to back it up with some science. Yeah, please do. No, go ahead. Shoot. Well, when we talk about a simulation, we're literally talking about like a matrix style simulation. And there's a lot of debate going on right now as to what consciousness really is. So much so that there's, I don't know if you guys have heard of the theory of everything, but basically it's one theory, one equation to basically dictate everything that's ever happened, everything that will happen on the planet or in the universe, not the planet, the entire universe. And they're getting closer and closer with this. But the thing that they added most recently to that, that they haven't tried before is consciousness. That is our conscious awareness and the collective consciousness. So all of our minds and our consciousness pulled together. The simulation part of that is what we're experiencing actually real. Because when you think about it, our brains are stuck behind our skull. They never, ever see the light of day. What they get is electrical impulses from our retinas, which pick up light particles. Our brains get electrical impulses from all of our senses. So if we touch something or we perceive that we touch something, an electrical impulse is sent from our finger to our brain saying, oh, you touch something. Smell, taste, all of our senses, the same exact thing. They are electrical impulses sent to our brains that are then deciphered. So how do we know we're not in a simulation? Can we, I just say something? Don't. And Elon Musk. I love this. Okay. Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla, big genius guy, goes on record saying that it is more probable... <laughs> right now exponentially more probable that we are living in a simulation or that we are experiencing a simulation from a more advanced civilization than if we are not that's coming from the mouth of elon musk so just take a moment and think about that and if you start believing that you're in a simulation you start understanding that you are in control and just like neo was able to control what happened in the matrix. Well, I'm not saying go try jumping off a building. <laughs> when you hit the ground, it's going to be rubber and bouncy back up. So please don't do that. But the point is, there's a good possibility, according to some of the smartest and most brightest minds on the planet, that we are actually living in a simulation. What were you going to say now, P? I mean, speaking of the smartest, most brilliant minds, our five-year-old, <laughs> I, was, I was tucking her in bed and we're having some really profound thoughts. And, and talks just about like vibration and like what feels good, what feels negative. Like tune in to me. I know you're drinking water over I'm there. I'm trying but to drink to water so you don't hear it in the microphone. So, so we're having this conversation back and forth and we're talking about vibration and what feels good and what connects with the spirit. Am I boring you? You're yawning. Carry on. Is it midnight? <laughs> <laughs> doesn't fucking matter okay. work's got to get see this is another thing ain't nobody do this podcast except for us shit's got to get done i don't give a fuck if it's midnight or not because that's probably what time it is right now and it's been a long ass day and i'm running off five hours and this sleep. is like a two hour podcast one of our longest podcasts ever but does am i phased no if she hadn't said anything you guys would have no idea that i was yawning except but it's for the done. fact that the cameras are rolling <laughs> and I'm, i can cut that shit out like i'm just so like this, to this is getting done and you're getting all my energy right now and i'm telling you guys you're getting all my energy so ain't wake nobody up. gonna do it hey listen I'm so, in control, motherfucker. So, I'm right. Control. And I'm also in control. So, five year old bedtime. Two reality Simulation, here. go. So, we're having this amazing, profound talk, and she's like, Mom, is what I'm experiencing right now real? My five year old says this. <laughs> is, is what I am experiencing real? And I said, It's real to you. Like, it was just so profound and crazy because I'm like, you're in a simulation. And she knows it. And she's able to control it. And she's able to make things happen. And it's crazy.
crazy. It's crazy. I think she manifested that stupid chicken on her door. Absolutely. And for the anybody fact that doesn't know, that we've had a chicken live on our doorstep ever since we got back from San Clemente. So when our when our dog passed, the next thing that showed up the day we got back from San Clemente is a fucking chicken. She wanted a puppy. We said no. And a she chicken got a chicken. Showed, a hen showed up at our doorstep. With all these weird characteristics that are exactly like our dog was. Same size, same color. No, we're not the same size. He's much bigger than Para. Weighs the same. Bird bones. Possibly. Dude, I mean, possibly. she weighs the same. And then, Makes a lot of sounds that are similar. And then does that. a lot of the same mannerisms, like like same relationship with Mia. Well, the funny part is the chicken actually walked into our house. We left the door open and it just walked into our house. If you miss our Snapchat, out. I'm sorry for you. Like this, this was crazy. This hen not only walked in our house, but flew up on the countertops and walked around on our stove. And then it perched on the soap dispenser in the sink. And while was Mia, pumping the sink or pumping the soap. Pumping Mia the gave soap. it a bath and was able to pet it. This is day one, y'all. And we fed it, and then it ended up sleeping on our porch on a big pedestal. We have this really nice pedestal out there. And we may or may not have pet it to sleep. Uh, possibly pet it to sleep. Yeah, it goes like, goes, which is weird, because that's what our dog used to do. Yeah, but, you know, th- this is a little different from our dog, because it fucking shits everywhere. Wait, no. It that's pretty accurate. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> like, every 15 minutes, there's a new pile of chicken shit. Everywhere, and I hose off the porch every two days because I can't stand it anymore, and it comes back. It's like a plague. We haven't decided what to call it but yet Mia either. It's got really like sixteen loves names. This chicken, and it's breaking my heart to send it away. And oh, the other thing too, it scratches up my grass because it's looking for food. So I just reseeded my grass for the second time, and guess what happened? The fucking chicken goes out there and scratches it up looking for worms and shit. But it waits till I'm like doing dishes at the sink, and it like attacks the like let me in, like and it gets Dude, the, the. We've the got a first, window well, the first in front of, the of second our. Night, it flew at the window. Yeah, like they wanted it in so bad it could flying up the and window, it, and it was like Dude. scratch, 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 peck, peck, peck at the door for like hours. We're like, um, go away. So the question is, <laughs> is that real or not? I don't fucking know. <laughs> well, she's like, is this real? And I could tell she was like having this profound, like, awakening. Okay, here's here's what tripped her out, and here's what will trip you out. Here's a little something you can do as we're wrapping up. Separate yourself from the fears of the future. Separate yourself from the fears of the past. And be in this present moment. And I said, you know what's real right now? You're five years old and your mama is tucking you in bed. We're healthy. We're well. We've got a home. There are no fires in our surrounding area. This is what's real. And when she stepped into the present moment, she lifted away from fear. Because fear is fear of things to come or fear of things that have happened. But when you're in that present moment, you're having the most exhilarating experience like Gabe had talked about with um, Will Smith. Oh, yeah. With the uh, skydiving. What's your quote? It's because it's gorgeous. I love it. It's a tweetable. The moment of maximum fear is the moment. I'm sorry. The moment. The point of maximum danger is the moment of minimal fear. The point of maximum danger is is the moment of minimal fear. Now, if you tweet that and we see you in person, we'll totally high five you. But the point is, understand that everything that you're experiencing is really just part of a simulation. Only the spirit is real. And the spirit is the present moment. Not fear of the future, not thinking about the past. You're here, you're, you're in this energy, in this moment. And lastly, but not leastly, it's gonna be profound, you ready for this? understand that you have a higher purpose like in the video that we shared this week if you go to our facebook if you go to our youtube you'll see the video that we posted about the fires you're here to wake up the world that's your job that's why you've been put here don't get caught up in the simulation understand that you're made for more well that's good those are 10 really awesome points on how to command your mind back in full how to basically neurohack your mind because remember, we're up against all this other shit that is being fed to you. So control everything, guys. You are in full control of everything. Command that fear to step down. Don't let the news get in your head, guys. Be grateful. Live in gratefulness. Think about what you're grateful for right here, right now. What is it that comes into your mind that you are grateful for? Is it your family? Is it the warm air? that you're feeling because your car window's down and you're driving home in traffic. 
but you feel the warm air from the sun. You feel the sunlight on your face. Are you grateful that you have a cup of coffee in your hand? You just love the smell of coffee. Grateful that you have running water, that you have a shower. You grateful that you have a family and that somehow you provided a roof over their head this month and that they're grateful for you. If you don't have any of that stuff, just walk outside and examine the veins on the back of a leaf and understand its amazing design. Be perplexed by the fact that the sun comes up and there's nothing that you can do to dissuade it or cause it. That's one thing that you do not have on your to-do list every single day. That would the make sun me comes up and the gravity. sun goes down. <laughs> Gravity's awesome too. No, I'm Shoot. saying that's the whole reason the sun rises and sets. Well, actually, we, we rotate around the sun, so it's called gravity. Do you have anything to do with any of that? No. Nope. I am in no control of Not that. on your to-do list. And I'm grateful I'm not in control of that. Isn't that nice? Because I probably stopped. Because what if you forgot? What if you forgot to set the timer and you're like, I'd oh man, try sun to get rises. Get five oh, hours out of this man. Day. <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. So, uh, you know, in the spirit of Body Spartan and uh, talking about how to command fear to stand down, guys, if you're fearful about anything, including starting a program, fearful about losing weight, fearful about getting into the gym, um, I really want you guys to. Oh, uh, you know, before I go there, I want to issue the challenge. I've totally forgot about this from earlier. Point to issue the challenge, guys. I want you to turn off your fucking TVs for 30 days. That's my challenge to you. 30 days. That's all I'm asking. I don't care if it's football season. I don't care if you're worried about what North Korea is doing. I don't care if you're worried about fires. Turn up the fucking news. There's always a way to get information. You know what you can do with that time? Just saying. Like, you know know what that could do for your... Or what it could do for your marriage? Maybe it's your dirty 30. Have more sex? I don't know. Just saying. I'm just putting that out there. Just saying. Because once the TV's off, you're going to become deprogrammed. You won't have all this shit going into your head. And also, turn off the fucking radio. When the commercials come on, turn them off. Like, just turn the radio off because that is when shit gets in your head. You get that hourly update at 10 till when they start giving you the news and what's going on. Turn it off. Don't listen to that shit. Pick and choose what you you're feed in your mind. My challenge to you, turn off the TV for 30 days and see what happens. That is why they read. call it a television program. You don't, you don't have to read. You can do your personal development. You can get your positive stuff in your brain the other way. You can listen to audio books if you want as you drive to work. You listen to other podcasts as you drive to work or as you cook your breakfast, plug in your earbuds, listen to it then. There's tons of other stuff you can do. When you're sitting around and you're bored, all of a sudden, after a couple of days, even a week, once you get deprogrammed from that TV, your your frontal cortex of your brain is going to open up and your creativity is going to spark. And out of nowhere... Your life is going to change. So free yourself from the chains of TV. Now, that's my 30-day challenge to you guys. I want you to try it. I want you to comment on it. I want you to hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, at Body Spartan. Everything's Body Spartan. I thought you were just going to do seven days. 30 days No, I'm talking 30. If you're going to do something, go fucking right. That's a commitment. It's TV. It's not that. It's nothing. It's television. It's not important. Think about it. Is television really important? Does anything... I mean... What did they do, do you, before Don't TV? you before remember? 19, when did TV come out? 1950? Somebody Google that real quick. When okay. Did that come out? Do, you, do you not remember being addicted to television? I do. Do you remember being addicted to ice cream? Remember we used to have ice cream I every night? Remember, remember being addicted shit. to Jack in the Box? But remember being addicted to sodas? That we me, Those are hard things. This like is me passing days? on information because oh I've been there and I've done that and I've ditched it all. All right. And I've recognized and realized that these things, they're just things. Mm-hmm. There are things that waste your life. Same thing with your house. We talked it's about life being short and Priscilla says life's not short. I think life is fucking short because every moment that you watch TV is a moment you will never get back. That's a moment you could be doing something. It's a moment you could be out experiencing life instead of just living it, sitting in front of the TV, watching your fucking life count down. Has it been three years or four years since we got rid of TV? It's been four years since we've got rid of TV. Look at what we've done. A, look at what we've poured into our marriage. Business, look at what we've poured, poured into. So our our nights every single week consist of either working until we can't work anymore. This is like so not work, you guys. We never work. We play so hard because it's fun. I mean, we put in a lot of effort, but just saying, this is fun. Or we... <clears throat> pour into our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, this is awesome. Like four hours a night without TV in the way the has done, done amazing stuff. 
the things that get done and <laughs> the things that get done. I, mean, I like how you put that. When we go on vacation, <laughs> most people go on vacation. What's the first thing you do when you get to the hotel? Turn on the TV. I don't touch the fucking TV. You know, when we go to Vegas, you know what I do? I switch it to the freaking Bellagio fountains when I'm there <laughs> so I can listen to music and watch the fountains or get the get the fountain music on or we just turn it off. Like when we stayed at the Cosmo, I don't think I turned the TV on once. I Maybe I wanted to see what's going on and like flip radio around. or something. The, the or I mean, not is, the radio, like the music. We put our there music is so it. much more to do than watch TV. If you if you look forward to watching TV, you're going to love this challenge because you're going to experience life. This is I said this before in, in some videos like you watch TV and you watch other people live their lives for you. You're living vicariously through them when you have the opportunity to go live your own life and experience. Oh, you want to skydive? Go skydive. <laughs> you want to be an actor? Go be an actor. You want to travel the world? We'll engineer a lifestyle that allows you to travel the world. That's what we did. And if you're watching TV to be inspired, I, there's so many different ways that you can be inspired because you're getting embedded information. Be inspired. Really? See, I kind of like, what about the travel channel or what I about, think, you know what I think happens? I think people watch TV in the hopes of being inspired, but what actually happens oh, is that's they like what you say about the news, the news feed and, in, in uh, Facebook, you're like, I'm looking for that one post that's going to change oh, my life. I recently realized that I was addicted to the Facebook feed. I was literally addicted. I, I realized I was addicted to my phone. And this started back in WWE when I was required to have my phone on my hip 24-7 because at any moment, any given time, I could get a phone call from the office saying, you're going on the road. This is your Or you're shot. fired. Or you're fired. <laughs> or your flight's changed. Or this or that. I had to have it by my Or so you're, I, you're an idiot. Why did you I have that? lived with my, my cell phone in my pocket or on my hip on a stupid nerd clip for the last <laughs> 10 years. That's just how I've lived my life. But I recently realized that well, I'll back it up. When Body Spartan really started to take off, Body Spartan started to take off. If I wasn't doing Facebook comments, when I was a one man show, I'd do all the Facebook comments. You like when comments. Body Spartan was starting? When it was starting, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Remember those nights I was sitting on the couch? I would just answer comments, answer comments, yes. answer, like, go, 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 yes, answer yes, messages. Yes. It was on it, but I was building the business. Right. I never got away from that, even though Sean and Sean and everybody else, the Seans, <laughs> our two Seans, they do all that stuff for us. Now I'm still like, oh, I need to check. I need to check. I need to check. And then when I stop checking, uh, I'd end up on my own Facebook feed, just literally flipping through, like looking and like, I don't know this person. Well, you got person. away from it for a while. I don't know this person. I don't know this person. I don't know this. Like over. And I'm like, one day I realized, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? And then I told you, was it two nights ago when I realized I was addicted to my phone? Or maybe it was last week, but I but it was you, you were like, why are you doing this? I said, I'm looking I know, for the, days the are one like melding into each other. inspirational video that's going to spark creativity or make me want to do something. And I and realized, then he's like, wait, wait, wait. Then he's like, hold on. <laughs> I found it. He's like, I've got it. I've got it. And I'm like, oh, this is so great. And he turns the phone towards me. And I, what did I say? I said, this is the reason I searched the feed. Goats in pajamas. No. <laughs> No, <laughs> baby goats in pajamas. Baby goats in pajamas. I was dying. I was like, okay, this is this Pointless. actually improved Pointless. my life. So what do I do? No, it I improved don't, my life a little bit. I've been bit. turning my phone over, or leaving it in the <laughs> kitchen, or leaving it. I'm like, I don't need my phone. I'm the goddamn CEO of this company. I don't need my phone. But I for, call people. They don't call me. But listen, <laughs> like you got away from it for a really long time, and you got back into it when we had all the things with your heart. I because did. you didn't want to be didn't. within arms distance away from it. Yeah. But then you got back into the habit of being with a phone. Well, and you're like, wait a minute. Let's explain. I didn't want to be within. Me. I didn't want to be outside in arms reaching my phone because I thought I was going to have a heart attack every day. And right. I needed to be able to call the paramedics. And then you realized this is a simulation. I'm in control. That too. Well, I still check my pulse once a day, but I'm of learning course. that it's still, you know, it's not real. It's all anxiety. The point is now I'm turning my phone over or even today at Lake Sonoma. I threw my phone in the grass so I wouldn't be able to touch it. Actually, wasn't in in the shoe. Didn't we both put our phones no, in I the shoe? No, I kept it in the pocket. I didn't want to lose it. And then I realized I don't want the. I don't want the electronics around me. So I went and laid up on the grass. I literally tossed it out of my reach so that it wouldn't be within what is it? The five foot range. Mine was gone until the longest time until the otter came. I was like, oh, I got to get his little face when he pops back up again. So disconnect guys. Control what goes in your brain. You are the master of your reality. You shape your reality with everything you do. Everything is a choice. You can choose to be fearful. Or you can choose to live in the moment. You can choose to use these things that we have put down in front of you today to command your brain to be in control. This is reality or a perceived reality. And it is what you make it. You can waste it in front of the television. 
You can let other people control your life. You can grab the reins and you can take control. We'll see you next time. Or we won't. Well, you want to say something? Go say it. Spit it out. You said, I'm ah. Just, I'm just saying, like, you might be listening right now and you're super inspired listening to what Gabe is saying. You're thinking about his sexy body and his awesome life. If you're inspired, that means that you have it within yourself to do the same exact thing. You're not created for fear. You're here to wake up the world. We'll see you next time. You son of a bitch. You took ah, Got it. For more free information on fitness, nutrition, and bodybuilding, visit us at www.bodyspartan.com.